Good girl. Okay, so I was um, going to pick up Luna right now to take her to the bathroom because I'm keeping her in this. She's so, so big right now that um, this is a really comfortable area for her to be in. And uh, when I put my hand underneath her bottom, my hand was very wet. So I turned her over to check and right now she has a bag of fluid coming out. So I don't know when this started. Um, <laughs> I feel very nervous right now. Uh, just hoping everything goes well. Um, Jaime is on his way home. I just called him to tell him. And um, I already sent a picture to our vet to let him know what's going on. And hopefully everything's going to be okay. And uh, I guess I'll do another update once something changes. So it's been over an hour now. And there's... Nothing new. There's Clark waiting right there. Um, nothing, no new developments or anything. Um, just still the same bag of fluid. She looks so big. Poor thing. But we are monitoring her and uh, she doesn't seem to be in distress yet. Uh, or right now at all. So... Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the vet wants us to give it another hour. Oh, a puppy's coming. Good girl, Luna. Good girl. Oh wow, I think I can already see that it's a Merle. Wow, okay. Come on, Luna, good girl, you got this. Good girl, good girl. Good girl. The time right now is 8.22 and this is the first one. You got it, good girl, good girl. Okay, she's really pushing now. Come on, can we move up a little bit? Come on. Oh, there we go, there we go. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, it cried. Okay. Okay, I just broke the bag. Oh, there you go, girl. Oh, there, yeah, good girl. There's the first puppy. She is being a great mom. She's really cleaning it up. I did break the bag on it. I guess I got nervous. Um, <laughs> also, I you know it was trying to breathe, and I wanted to make sure that just happened right away. But I'm letting her do the rest now. It looks really good. It's a beautiful, beautiful Merle puppy. Just gorgeous. This is still the first puppy and it's nursing for the first time. I got it latched onto a nipple and it's doing really good. So it's been a while now and we're expecting another one to come soon. <sighs> Luna looks like she's getting tired. We had the second puppy at 2.30 in the morning, and that was about five and a half hours after the first puppy was born. And then um, about 30 minutes later or so, we had another one. And then about an hour and a half later, another one. And then almost two hours later, um, one more puppy. So right now we have uh, two Merles, a boy and a girl, and two black and whites, a boy and a girl.
Luna had the two black and white puppies um, by herself, and then I just helped her deliver the last Merle one right now. And she does still look kind of big, so we might be getting more puppies soon. We'll see. Another one came up? Yeah. She's doing a great job, man. Yeah. It is 7.20 a.m. on December 6th now. And Luna has given birth to her fifth puppy. And it looks like it's a tri. It's got a red head and a pretty dark body. It is 7.49. Looks like another one might be coming. You might not want to get the other one, right? Yep. There's another one. Good girl, Luna. What is this? It looks like a red, a red merle maybe. Come on, are you breathing? Come on. Maybe a red merle? A little hard to tell right now because it is still very wet. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock in the morning and we have six puppies so far. It's uh, two girls and four males. And um, once they dry up, I'll be showing each one uh, so we can see their colors and see exactly... Um, what they are um i think so far it's uh two black and whites uh two blue merles one red merle and one try i think that's what we have <laughs> but um i don't know once they dry sometimes they look a little bit different it is 9 19 in the morning and we just had puppy number seven and it's that little black and white girl right there Super pretty little puppy. So I just reset the stopwatch and we're going to give it another two hours and um, see if she's going to have any more. Um, poor thing. I think she's getting very tired. So hopefully she'll be done soon if she's not, you know, done already. But that is puppy number seven.
Looks like puppy number eight is coming out. Oh, here it comes. Oh, looks like this one's tail first. There's been a few tail first. Another big push. Almost there, Luna. Come on. The bag broke, so I'm going to pull a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. I want to make sure it comes out so that the bag doesn't break and then its head is still in there and it's not being able to breathe. But it looks like it's good. Um, hmm. I think this one might have gotten a little bit of fluid in its mouth. Hopefully it's not too bad. I'm going to... Um, put the camera down so that I can uh, help her and make sure that this puppy's okay. Oh, you had all of those in there. Luna, you literally littered. You littered, Luna. Well, it is 9.50 in the morning. So, are we done, Luna? I don't know. I don't know if we're done. <laughs> And I'm actually waiting for her to be done so that I can change these blankets. I actually um, flipped it, but I want to give her new blankets. So I'm waiting until two hours from her last birth to change it. Um, it was actually 20 minutes between pu puppy number seven and puppy number eight. Um, so we might be done. That is a lot of puppies. So <laughs> we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. So, I think that Luna might still be in labor. <laughs> and we are at eight puppies. But, I don't know. She just seems to still be having contractions. So here's Luna with all her puppies and it seems like she is completely finished now. So it seemed like she was going to have another puppy earlier and then nothing happened and she passed um, some of the fluid and all of that. So it seemed like she wasn't going to have any more puppies. But then at around 2.30 she actually gave birth to two more puppies um, back to back right away. And the first one that came out was a stillborn, so I'm assuming that's why she was having so much trouble earlier um, actually getting it out, is because it had probably already uh, died um, a while back, and she was still trying to get it out. And then the puppy that came right after it was actually very healthy and looks great. So she has nine puppies. She gave birth to ten in total. Um, but nine healthy puppies is really, really good. We feel really happy that she was able to have a whole of these puppies. It's a whole lot more than we anticipated. And we're really sad about the puppy that didn't make it. But we're happy that the rest were able to be born natural. 
and that they are doing so well. So let's go over the puppies that she has. So she has um, this one over here that is a Merle male and it looks basically just like Clark. There's this Merle over here and uh, that one does kind of look like Clark except it has um, red on its face and that's a female. There's this um, red Merle male and then these ones, I don't exactly remember um, which ones are which. There are some females and some males. Um, this one looks like it's a brindle, and that's actually a color that comes from the cardigan side, um, even though they're only 25% cardigan. And then there's um, a black and white male there. Um, these two... The one in the middle is, you know, the tribe uh, or black and white, depending on how much brown he gets. The two on either side of them might be reds. I'm not exactly sure what color they are yet. These puppies' coats can actually change a lot over the next few weeks. I actually thought that Luna was a sable when she was born, and now she has a very bright red coat. So we'll see um, what they look like. And in the following vlogs, you'll be able to see more of them. Right now, they're just all very tired and comfortable, so I'm not going to move them around. Uh, but you will be seeing more of them later. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed that vlog. Now, I'm going to be answering some questions that I'm sure a lot of you have right now. And I thought it would be a good idea to get all of this out of the way in the first vlog. So, um, here's some questions that I'm sure you guys are thinking about, and I'm going to give some explanation and detail um, about those things. Okay, so am I a breeder now? 100% no, I am not a breeder. I always intended this to be a one-time thing. I don't want to actually breed corgis. That's not what's happening here. In fact, even before Luna gave birth, me and my husband talked about it, um, not considering it, but just saying that it was way too stressful and that we never could imagine d doing this and going through this on a regular basis. So. No, we're not breeders. In fact, we like wanted Luna to get fixed like the day after she gave birth. Um, obviously, that's not the way that you do things, but um, Luna will actually be getting spayed after this. So was this intentional? Yes and no. So I had always had the intention of breeding my corgis um, since the beginning, basically. I am really passionate about this breed and it's not a common breed. It really annoys me when people breed like huskies, pit bulls, chihuahuas, because on any given day, you can walk into a shelter and find one. And with corgis, it's a completely different story. It's actually really hard and you have to be on waiting lists and they're not, um, they're, there's not a lot of them and they're very in demand. So um, that's, you know, the difference to me with those. So I did want another corgi and because of the limited availability and of course the price of corgis, I thought it was a you know, good idea to just um, breed instead. And because my friends and family love corgis so much, um, I was gonna be able to find a good home for all of them. So uh, that was, you know, a big reason as to why I was like, yes, I can do this is because I know that I'm going to be giving good homes to all of these puppies. Now the timing of this, we just let happen. I had told my vet that it was my intention to breed my corgis. And he told me that it would be a good idea to just um, breed Luna young, that it would be easier on her and just better for the puppies and all of that. So um, after a certain point, it was kind of just like, you know, let them do their thing, um, see if it happens. And with Clark, it was actually right away. Um, but it, it wasn't any artificial insemination or anything forced or anything like that. It was just like, yeah, we want it to happen. We're going to let it happen on its own time. And it was actually pretty quick. Will we be removing tails? Absolutely not. Um, if anyone even asked for that, they would automatically be off my list. And um, these, these corgis are 75% Pembroke and 25% cardigan. Now I'm gonna let you know, purebred Pembrokes, there is 95% of them are born with tails. 
they are docked. Um, they're they're not born, you know, without tails. Uh, so that that's not going to happen with us. We're not going to be cutting off body parts um, so that they look a certain way. Just it's not happening. <laughs> Will I be keeping any of the puppies? Yes, um, but I am not ready to say yet how many or which ones, um, but you will find out later in these vlogs because I am really excited and really happy about it. So um, that's something you'll find out about. What about the other puppies? So the other puppies uh, will be going to homes. Like I said, I have lots of friends and family that's very interested. Um, so they're going to be going to people that I know. I'm not going to be selling them off to strangers um, or anything like that. The number that we had was very unexpected. Um, so I'm not exactly, you know, sure yet who's going to who or anything like that. That's all going to be worked out. And like I had told people even before they were born, I'm, I'm not going to make any decisions before they're born because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what we're going to get. And so um, they were just born. So that stuff hasn't been figured out yet. Um, but they're going to be going to very loving homes. So let's um, go over what happened. It was very stressful, uh, really, really stressful, even before labor started. Uh, Luna had milk about 10 days before she started delivering puppies. And that's kind of a long time for dogs, if you're familiar with them. And she was so big, just absolutely huge um, towards the end. And towards the end, she also started dropping weight. Uh, so that was... That was stressful. I felt like I was doing something wrong. <laughs> now that we have 10 puppies, I, I kind of understand what was going on more. Um, but it was very stressful and I started thinking maybe I had the due date wrong. Luna was due to have her puppies on December 7th and she started having her puppies on December 5th. So she did actually almost make it to her actual due date. And um, nine of the puppies were born on December 6th. So uh, it, it was pretty much um, on the due date. So I did have the date correct. Uh, I was surprised because she just was getting so big. I was like, oh, she's going to have these tomorrow. And it just, it kept going and kept going. So her water actually came out um, like in a little bag instead of like completely breaking um, hours before she gave birth to her first puppy. And I was so worried that she was going to need a C-section. And my vet was on call in case that did happen, and we had even already agreed that if she did go in for a C-section, she would get spayed at the same time. Um, but after a while, you know, the first puppy came, and then it was five hours, um, uh, I think like almost five and a half hours, until the next puppy was born. And that was really, really stressful. The whole time I kept thinking, am I, am I making the wrong decision? Am I doing the wrong thing? by not taking her in. I wanted her to have these puppies natural. I really, really wanted her to um, just, you know, give birth natural. It's better for mom and baby. That's, you know, always the case. Um, but I did, I did have it in my mind since the very beginning. Okay, if it doesn't go right, then yes, she's going to go in. But she was never in any um, stress, discomfort. I would take her out um, to walk around. She'd, um, go to the bathroom, uh, she'd come back in. So it just seemed like she wasn't in any sort of distress to actually have to go in the middle of the night to um, get her surgery. And I'm really, really glad <laughs> that I, I did wait. Um, it was very hard, uh, but I'm really glad. And I really feel like I made the right decision because she had 10 puppies naturally. Now, um, the ninth puppy was a stillborn and I still feel like it was the right decision not to get a C-section because I don't think that that would have really changed the outcome. Um, that puppy she had some trouble with. It was like after the eighth one I started recording and I was like, oh, here comes another one. And then nothing happened. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm wrong. Like she passed some afterbirth and I was like, oh, she must be done. So then about, I think it was two and a half hours later, um, if that long. Uh, she actually did give birth to two more puppies back to back and the first one was a stillborn and I Don't think that it was any issue of the puppy being too big um, That's typically why corgis um, need a c-section. It's very very common in the breed It's because a puppy will be too big and it won't pass through the birth canal So this puppy did pass through the birth canal and it wasn't really any bigger than some of the other ones, so I don't think uh, it actually wasn't bigger than any of the other puppies. So I don't think it was anything having to do with that. And 
I, I don't think there's anything that could be done. I mean, that is kind of an, a normal situation that that happens. Um, and then the 10th puppy came and it was a little girl and she was super healthy and just, you know, wiggling around uh, and she uh, was, you know, came out just fine. So that was really great. So we were really, really shocked, uh, me and my husband and even, you know, the rest of my family that I've been talking to about this, about um, 10 puppies. It was like, wow. Uh, I have seen a lot of corgi litters and like six to eight is a lot for them. I'm sure other people have experienced 10 puppies, but it is definitely not the norm. So that was crazy. And I would have preferred a smaller litter uh, for Luna, um, but that's what we got and you can't control that. Um, so I guess that's it to talk about for today's vlog and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow since this is going to be a daily thing for a while to uh, show you how the puppies are growing and everything. So I think that's going to be really fun. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and then you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, for more updates on the puppies because I will be posting photos and all of that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!